in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 9. In English the Bible says, There remaineth then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God did from his. This has, today is, has been my prayer, that I may be able to rest from my own effort. I may be able to rest from my own fear. I will be able to rest from my own hard working. And as the Bible says, we work so hard in vain. I'm praying in Jesus' name that God will release a grace like he released at one point in the life of Isaac. The Bible says the climate was not uh, favorable. So as a man, he thought that he should run away. And he planned how to run away. And the Bible says that uh, um, just the moment he wanted to run away from the land God has given him, God appeared to him and talked to him and said, don't run away from this land. This is the land I gave to your fathers. This is the land I have planned to bless you. Yes, the climate is not favorable. Yes, it looks as if the famine is coming. And it's true, the famine is coming. But don't leave this land. This is Genesis chapter, chapter 26. That's what the Bible says. Don't leave this land. Do not go down to Egypt. That's what the Bible says. God is telling him in uh, Genesis 26 and verse 2. Do not go to Egypt, but remain in this land. And the Bible says, true, there was famine, but when we go um, to verse 12, the Bible says that Isaac planted that year in that land. He planted crop in that land. Hallelujah. The same year, he reaped 100 fold. I mean, look at this. Isaac understood the normal of uh, um, um, seasons, how it goes, and he understood that you must labor, plant, and then the rain must come, and then the crop will come up, and you shall harvest abundantly. But God did something unusual that in the times of famine, God caused some uh, supernatural um, um, movement around Isaac and in the life of Isaac. And it was not business as usual. Because business as usual is that he plants and the rain comes. But this year, there was no rain. So he planted and left it in the hands of God. So he rested. I can see Isaac not working as hard as he used to work other years. He just planted and he rested and God did the rest. Hallelujah. This is what I'm talking about. Even for business people, even for companies, even at this time, many businesses have gone down. There remaineth a rest for all those who believe in God, that God will do something during this season out of normal. He will do something out of normal. Oh, I thank God for that. I thank God for that. I thank God. And I am praying today, may God give us a rest from our own effort. How we know things ought to go, we put a lot of effort in that particular direction. We know so much how fu things function in this world. Our brain has a picture of how things ought to be fitted in. But I want to bring to you, there are times, no matter how you try, how wise you are, it doesn't matter how wise you are, but still things don't work. What you need is this grace of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 9. The grace of rest from your own work and allow God to do his work. Hallelujah. We know very well um, uh, um, about the children of Israel. 
the sort of rest we are talking, God is talking about. We find it in the security of the children of Israel in the book of uh, Exodus chapter 14 when they, were, they have come to the Red Sea and the armies of uh, Pharaoh are following. And when they looked out, they saw they are no match to the army of Pharaoh and they got worried. And they started planning what they can do. Because there was no way moving forward, the sea was there. They could not retry back. The desert was there and the soldiers of Pharaoh were there. So they were there trying to think how to do. They even said, let us arrest Moses and give him back to the soldiers of Pharaoh. But in the midst of every, all those problems, we see in verse 14, in verse um, yeah, 13, the man of God Moses telling them, hold on. Do not be afraid. Stand still. Some Bible will say, stand still. Others would say, hold on. I like that one which says, hold on. And you shall see the salvation of God. Hallelujah. It is us by telling him, don't be afraid. Because fear comes out from uh, um, um, our perception of what we know. Fear is a response of uh, um, our heart, um, sort of uh, um, the way our heart is not able to have hope in front of us. So fear comes of, out of a hopeless, hopeless heart. And Moses is telling them, do not be afraid. Do not fear. Stand firm. Stand still. And you shall see the salvation of the Lord. Maybe I should move a bit and just bring to you about this rest. Now, God doesn't want them to fight for themselves. He wants them to be still. He wants them to enjoy. He wants, he wants them to, to not to fear. He wants them to have hope. Hallelujah. They have never seen such a thing. Now, what happened is that the cloud that was guiding them drew back and became a pillar of fire between them and the Egyptian. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. And in the night, there came a great wind. It blew over the sea and in the morning there was a, a way God had stopped the water from the right hand he had stopped the water from the left hand it had built a pillar miracle that this water comes rather than mixing with the water it goes up to create a wall I always imagine that's what happened and this other water is flowing and you know how many kilo grams are, is, the, is that water, the mass, the tons of that water. So it used to come, hit a particular place, then goes up and build a pillar. So I can see um, a spill, spilling of, uh, you know, and rotation of the water. And the children of Israel, when they looked, they saw the road. They shouted. And Moses told them, move forward. They started running. Walking on that, I mean running on that path in the midst of the sea. And we see them coming to the other end of the sea. And the pillar of fire was still there. You know, securing them from the soldiers of Pharaoh. And when they were on the other side of the sea, now God removed the pillar of fire. And the, and the soldiers of Pharaoh started coming running towards the children of Israel. Remember they are on the other side. Oh, hallelujah. Now, the Bible says very clearly that when the soldiers were um, galloping and uh, running with their horses and their chariots, God loosened up the wheels of their chariots. So the soldiers of Pharaoh, they thought they were moving, but they were not moving. They were just galloping. God has uh, loosened up the wheels of the, um, of, of, of the wagons and the rituals and the, and the horses. Wonderful. You remember the children of Israel are on the other side. Then, within a short time, God released the water 
to come and destroy the soldiers. And when the children of Israel, they saw this, hallelujah, they shouted and started singing unto God. They started to praise the Lord because God has given them a victory without them fighting. In the, in, in the presence of God, we say it is a place of security. It's a place where God fights for us. Praise the name of the Lord. This is what we mean. Now, instead of the Israel taking their swords and fighting the Egyptians, God is giving them a time to relax and to behold the destruction that God was to bring to the Egyptians because Moses told them, the Egyptians you see today, you will never see them again. Now, you see, I want to bring you the picture of Moses versus the children of Israel. Let's start again when they are on the other side of the Red Sea. The children of Israel are full of fear. They are afraid. They are shouting. But Moses is cool. Because now Moses had already entered into the rest of God. Because God did not come to compete with the children of, 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 of Egyptians. He didn't come to compete with the soldiers of Egyptians. He was, the, he was their authority, the sovereign Lord. God did not come down to try if he's going to win over the Egyptians. He came down already a winner of the war. Already God had gone through, the Bible says, he knows the end from the beginning. So Moses was in the position of God who had gone to the end and he's back to the beginning. That's why you see Moses is telling them, hold on and you shall see the salvation of God. Already Moses had entered God's rest because God already finished the battle and he was enjoying the victory. And that's why also Moses tells them, the soldiers you see today, you will see them no more. Already Moses was in the position of God. Already they have conquered the, the, the armies of Egypt and they are relaxing and enjoying. Somebody should say amen. That's where we want you to be. That's where God wants you to be. At a place of rest. You need to rest from your own works. You need to rest from your own effort. You need to rest from your own fear. You need to rest. Hallelujah from your own effort. You need to come where God is. You need to come to the victory of God. By the time God comes back to the children of Israel, he had already worked out the formula. He had already fought the war. And Moses was in that position of God of understanding and knowing what will happen to the soldiers of the Egyptians and now he was relaxing. So when you look Moses in the midst of the children of Israel you will see a Moses that is smiling because he knows the end from the beginning. The work of destroying the, the soldiers of Pharaoh is not yet but already he has gone with God. He's finished and you see a smiling Moses and you see a Moses that's enjoying himself. Although they have not crossed the sea, and although even the, the, the sea has not opened up, it was the water was still there, ranging, and there was no way. But you see a Moses who knows the end from the beginning. God would like you and me to be where he is, a position of enjoying the accomplished work he has done. The Bible says he knows the end from the beginning. We need to trust our God that already he has, a, he has planned everything good for us. We need to come to the place of God whereby there is surety of the victory even before it begins. Let me tell you, brethren, whatever you are going through, God saw it before he came back to walk with you. You need to be where he is. 
You need to cast away fear. You need to cast away your worry. Hallelujah. The other thing you need to do is that you need to live a life of being dead to the order of the world. You need to be in a position where although you are a human being, but you are dead to the results of this world. You need to be dead to the feelings that comes as fear, panic. You need to die. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, being renewed in the inner of your mind. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to crucify the, na the human nature. Let's look at uh, Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Praise the name of the Lord. Romans chapter 6 and verse 6. Wonderful scripture. The Bible says, Romans 6, For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Hallelujah. My point is that we know our old self that thinks in the pattern of this world has died when we left the world of sin and came to Jesus. That part of our life died. And now we have been resurrected together with Jesus. And we are seated with him in the heavenly realm. And the Bible says, God did that so that he may demonstrate to this world through me and through you. So we need to die to the normal functions of things of this world. We need to die to the normal reasoning of this world. I know this is a high task for some people, but I want to give you a simple formula. A simple formula is to believe in God and to trust in God even when your mind does not understand. You need to believe in God. You need to trust God even when your mind doesn't understand. Let's go back to the children of Israel. They should have believed in Moses even if they did not understand how the road will be. Even if they did not understand how the salvation will be. They could have cooled down and waited upon to see what God had planned for them. And that's why Moses is telling them, hold on and you shall see the salvation of God. Sometimes we find ourselves worrying too much until we destroy ourselves. Sometimes we work so hard not remembering that God knows each and every minute of our life. Sometimes we labor so much in vain. But the sad thing is that after laboring so much, we still feel that we have not accomplished. And this is something that destroys we the sons of God. When we don't put the whole of our trust to our God, we work it ourselves. We try to do things the way we know, the way we think we know. But I want to let you know, we just tire ourselves. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. I'm interested with one line there. And verse 2. Isaiah 55. Why spend money on what is not bread? And your labor, and your labor on what does not satisfy. We spend money, our effort, on what is not beneficial. We need to spend our effort where it will bring um, uh, production. We waste our energy. Here, as I call it, we spend money on, on, uh, on bread. On what is not bread, rather. 
So you spend money thinking you want to buy a bread, but it's not a bread. And you labor, and you, are, and you are labor on what does not satisfy. Hallelujah. We need to come to a position of our life where we put God first. Praise the name of the Lord. Colossians 2 tells us wonderful of the accomplished work. Colossians chapter 2. A scripture that I really like many years ago when God opened my eyes on this scripture. It has really been a, a pillar of my life. And it has been, a, it has encouraged me, but above all, it has generated a godly power of confidence in many areas of my life. I see it as a very central point of the faith of, of a Christian in Jesus Christ. The Bible says about Jesus. I can read from verse 13. When you are dead in your sins and in the circumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. Very important. Because that's the beginning point. And I'm talking to people whose sins have been forgiven. People who have put their trust on Jesus. And I'm talking to people who have not given their life to Jesus. Challenging them. That if they want to be partakers of the finished or accomplished work of God through Jesus Christ. They must have faith in Jesus. They must believe with their heart. And confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. Now, verse 14 of Colossians chapter 2, the Bible says, Having cancelled the written code with its regulation, God cancelled the code that was working against us together with regulation. That which was against us and that which stood opposing us, he took it away. That opposition, he took it away and nailed it to the cross. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Let's continue. Verse 15. And having disarmed, he took away all the powers and authority of the devil. And he made him a public spectacle, a laughing stock, and rejoicing. God rejoiced over the victory in the cross. The cross is a symbol of God's victory and our victory. The cross is the symbol of the joy of God. Hallelujah. When he looked upon the cross and Jesus is not on the cross, it gives him joy. Hallelujah. It is a symbol of his triumph over the powers of the devil. The cross also is a symbol of joy because of human beings, me and you. For he did all this, giving us Jesus, that Jesus will suffer and take away every condemnation. As the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, there is now no condemnation to them who, Christ, who believe in Christ Jesus. God even went to the camp of the enemy, the devil, took away. Hallelujah. Everything from the devil. And he rejoiced over the victory. Isaiah 53 verse 10 gives us a picture of God looking upon Jesus on the cross. He was so determined that Jesus must accomplish some work because that's where we human beings were to start enjoying all the promises of God. God was determined. Though it was painful. Isaiah 53 speaks about man of sorrow. That is Jesus. The man who was rejected. Who was taken out like a sheep for slaughter. Now, verse 10 of Isaiah 53 gives us now the picture of God. In, from verse 1, it gives us a picture of Jesus. And the picture of people. How they 
they took him and how they rejected him. But now Isaiah 53 verse 10 gives us a picture of, G, of God himself. That it, it says it was the Lord's will to crush Jesus and cause Jesus to suffer until the Lord makes him, his life, a guilt offering. It is God who made the life of Jesus to be a guilt offering. But it is the same God that will see Jesus' offspring and prolong his days. We, the church, we are the offspring of the work of Jesus. We are the offspring of the accomplished work of Jesus. What really excites me, oh, praise the Lord. And I believe God has been charging me with this word in various ways and I'll be bringing to you soon, if not today. Now, the last word says, and the, the will of the Lord will prosper in, he, in his hand. That is, the will of the Lord will prosper in the hands of Jesus. Now, you can see the picture of the heart of God. There is some work that needs to be accomplished that will release the human beings from their suffering. Praise the Lord. There is a work that God has begun through his son Jesus. And the will of the Lord is to see Jesus accomplish that. Because that is the thing that would deliver us human beings. Hallelujah. And God puts Jesus in this very hard life. And God allows Jesus to suffer so much. Because he knows that his will, the will of God, will prosper in the hands of Jesus. So Jesus must conquer. Jesus must accomplish the assignment. No matter how difficult it is, no matter how painful it is, we can imagine how painful it was. Piercing his hand with the nails was not nothing. Like them taking spikes and beating his back tearing out the flesh oh man he had not slept the whole night he was being rushed from here the Caiaphas place and all these other places he had not eaten apart from the last supper and now the other following day he's being tossed between Herod and the other leader and finally they put him down beat him with the canes that had spikes tearing his back. By the time they are putting him on the cross, he is a broken man. The flesh is bro broken. But that was his assignment. Why? So that you and me will enjoy every promise of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I can see Jesus on the cross as a son of man crying Father, Father, why do you, uh, do you forsake me? And it's as if God turned away his face. Away from his son. Why? Because he was so determined that Jesus, you must accomplish the assignment. Jesus, you must accomplish the assignment. So that men will enjoy every promise. And we really thank God that Jesus succeeded. So that the will of God will be perfected in his suffering so that we, the offspring of salvation, will enjoy the accomplished work so that we who are condemned will not go through that pain. And that's why Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, there is now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to come to this place of rest. See the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, we just read 4.9, that it's, I'm putting it in my own word. You know, it's the will of God that we should rest from our work just as he rested from his work. Because anybody who enters God's rest. And this means 
by now God is not working to deliver us. Ooh. I know it's a bit uh, controversial, but God is not working to save us. He saved us and he's resting on the throne and Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God and he's calling us to believe in him that we may enter his place of rest where no evil works of the devil shall work against us where the devil himself can never be able to reach us hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I really feel uh, moved by the spirit of God I feel the heart of God stretching out with love and saying why don't you turn to me I worked on the formula finished it is you to turn to me God is always grieved when we cannot walk in faith God is not is very much grieved when we cannot walk the way out of sin God is grieved when he sees us trying to do things our own way rather than turning to him in prayer and asking him to release that grace of enjoying the accomplished work. I very much, I'm very much assured. And I, this one, I really believe it in the name of Jesus. That our God is ready to do anything we ask in the name of Jesus. Because that is his promise. Jesus said, ask anything of my father and he shall do it for you. I want to challenge all of us to put our trust in God and everything we desire, we come to him in faith. Even if we don't understand even if it doesn't make any meaning. But to God, it has a lot of meaning. I want to let you know, it is the joy of God to allow you to enjoy the accomplished work. It is the joy of God that you should enter his rest. Hallelujah. That you should enter into the place of his accomplished work. Hallelujah. I challenge you, like in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. Let us fix our eye, not the physical eye. Not the physical eye, but the spiritual eye. It speaks, this verse speaks about depending on him. When he says, fix our eyes on Jesus, it's us depending on him, trusting him, who is the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him, and you are the cross, the joy set before him. He knew that God had set a, a joy before him. What is the joy? Sitting at the right hand of God, being exalted and being given a name. You see, this is the point that I'm challenging you. We must see the benefit. We must bring ourselves to believe in the benefit. Even if sometimes we feel as if we don't understand. We need, we need all of us to put our faith on him who began a good work in us. Hallelujah. Just as Jesus in the, in the midst of the pain, he fixed his eyes unto God, looking forward. Hallelujah. To what was set ahead of him. And he knew that he was to sit down at the right hand of the Lord. The right hand of the throne of God. And that's where God wants us to be. In Ephesians chapter 2. He says when he rose up Jesus, verse 6. Chapter 2, verse 6. When he raised up Jesus... He raised us together and seated us with him in the heavenly realm. Hallelujah. This is the place we are being drawn into the presence of God. A place of rest. 
Whenever you come across anything in life, put it upon Jesus in prayer. Every morning, wake up. Three things, maybe I mentioned two. Wake up in the morning feeling helpless of yourself. You need to wake up in the morning feeling helpless of yourself that you can never be able to see the day alone. And that will bring you down to your knees to call upon Jesus to commit your day upon Jesus. You need to wake up in the morning having a desire to enjoy the promises of God that day. You need to wake up in the morning full of, number three, full of hope. Full of hope that this day my God will release the accomplished, the finished work. We need to wake up in the morning full of great faith that he who called me will able to see me through this day. I'm set to receive and to enjoy because my God wants that I should rest from my own work because my God wants me to enjoy the accomplished work and God does not want me to break myself to break my mind bothering what's going to happen breaking my mind with fear he doesn't want me to break my mind with fear he wants me to come to the place of rest that's why he says those who have entered into Jesus they have entered into his rest they have to rest from their own works like God he rested now him and Jesus sits at the right hand of God hallelujah and whatever we ask of God, we shall receive it. And the Bible says, this is the confidence that we have. We need to have confidence. Hallelujah. And this will help us whenever we are going to face a situation. Always our mind will go to remember Jesus has accomplished. Jesus has paid for it. Even at this time that the world is... Uh, being uh, um, torn apart by the coronavirus. One thing I believe with all my heart, that God wants us to enjoy his rest. God is not out to compete with coronavirus. God is not out to be threatened by coronavirus. Oh no. About diseases, he finished over 2,000 years ago. For the Bible says, that he was breathed because of our healing. The Bible says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. By his stripes we are healed. That's what the Bible says. The stripes was about 2,000 years ago. So today, I believe God wants us to enjoy his safety from the disease and infirmities. God wants us to enjoy and wait upon him and not to bother so much with the negative news and the negative happening around us he wants us to relax like the children of Israel on the other side of Red Sea Moses wants them to relax hold on and wait upon God wants us to hold on and wait upon something is happening the coronavirus you see you will see it no more my God has a formula already how to deal with it. And I believe in the spiritual realm. He has already begun to deal with it. And I want to let you know, you will see a change sooner than you think. You will see victory sooner than you can imagine. For my God, for my God is in our midst. He has his power like fire standing between us and death standing between us and infirmity standing between us 
and the suffering. Oh, I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of God that gives us rest will deal with our enemy this time, diseases and infirmities. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that Father God, you release the grace of the accomplished work. You said you tore into pieces the written cord of our suffering because of diseases and infirmity. Oh my God, the Bible says in the book of Colossians, you tore into pieces the condemnation of death, the condemnation that brings suffering. My God, my Father, I believe it in Jesus' name. Release the power of healing every corner of this world. Release the power of deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name I pray for every brother, every sister that is afraid, that is torn into pieces by fear. I pray, my God, my Father, give them confidence through your faith and through trusting in your word. I pray, Father, visit them, those who are sick. Visit them, comfort them. Let them see Jesus. I raise Jesus sitting on the throne of God. Let everybody see he who bore the marks of our healing. He who carries the marks on his back. And as he said to Thomas, even my hand you can see. He who has the marks, he whom we shall see coming down. And men who see, yes, will say, yes, this is the man that we crucified. Look at his marks. They are still on the, on the hands. In his hand, he still have the marks of the crown of thorn. They will say glory to he who comes in the name of the Lord. Even today we say glory to him who comes in the name of the Lord. That is Jesus, the son of the living God. He's stirring up the camps of the enemy. He's stirring up every um, attack of the enemy through this, this disease in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray in Jesus' name that the power of God will destroy the power of this enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to give you confidence through the word of God that let us trust in him, depend on him, believe in him. Let us fix our eyes on him in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace from now and forevermore. Amen. May the Lord smile upon your face in every problem you are. Relax. We are in safe hands in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen.